let's go. I'm on a journey to discover the truth. Living life in recovery is lovely. You got the power in you. Surround yourself with positive energy. Judges hitting people with provocative penalties. Need to make a change. Advocate to change the laws. Prove the people that it's not insane. When you stand behind a cause, I'm here to speak about the pain. Recover loud to normalize the disease that's been killing all my friends and my family. The time is now to let it all go and recover loud. The benefit is healthy people, family and friends that never have to overdose ever again never have to plead out to a lesser offense i'm proud to say that i recover loud i never thought i could but i'm so proud that i discovered how to live my life again controlling my own destiny i needed recovery i still need it desperately addiction never defined my identity. i recover loud here to tell my own story i recover proud save a life of like 40 i recover loud yeah i recover loud i recover loud yeah I recover loud, I recover loud, here to tell my own story. I recover proud, save a life of like 40. I recover loud, yeah, I recover loud. I recover loud, yeah, I recover loud. I recover, 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 I recover loud. guest is my friend and director of Recover Loud, Ryan Lemire. Ryan, it's really great to have you as the director of the show. Um, I think you're doing some great work and I appreciate you wanting to share your story. Uh, You're in recovery. Uh, How long has it been? Uh, 5,219 days today. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And and that's an amazingly high number. Um, And, you know, many people out there keep track of how many days that they've been doing it. Um, you know, we do it one day at a time, and those days add up. Um, yeah. So, uh, how many years is that? Uh, 14 and some months. Sir. Yeah. Um, so, when you went into recovery, uh, you know, what was your life like before that? Uh, you know, what did that look like? Uh, <clears throat> well, when I went in, to recovery mode, um, my first daughter was about to be born. It was actually like her her due date, August first, uh, two thousand eight, <clears throat> uh, and so it was like a frantic kind of thing, you know. And and we were living downstate, mm-hmm. um, and my my wife is from Arista County, and had more supportive family for from her side up here, you know. And down there, we didn't really have too much for support. So, um, just kind of leaving that and coming up to Aristic County was like my way of uh, getting away. So that's kind of when I entered into recovery, uh, August 1st, 2008. And I did it, um, by using, I guess, other substances as crutch, you know, I would still smoke cigarettes and drink and, and I smoked weed and stuff. And I felt like in 2008, there wasn't a lot of talk about harm reduction. Yeah. Uh, then, but when you look back at it, it's exactly kind of like what it was, uh, not knowing, but feeling like, hey, if I'm, if I cut this other stuff out of my life, you know, and I just do this, I think that's a lot better, you know. That was my outlook, kind of how I looked at it. Yeah, and, and of course, I mean, it's, it's really difficult to just stop using every coping skill that you're used to using that you got in the habit of using, uh, and for a lot of people, you know, the only thing they know. Um, that helps them get through. Um, so to cut everything out at once, you know, is is pretty difficult. So the idea of harm reduction is to make a positive change towards, um, you know, sobriety possibly if that's what you want to do. Um, so you you're able to stop doing the things that were going to kill you, um, you know, and uh, you know start to live your life again. What was your life? during um, use like? I mean. uh, use for me kind of started, uh, I mean, I guess in middle school would be the first time I ever really did anything. 
between, well, even further back, um, fourth grade, tried my first cigarette. Nine, ten years old, something like that. A friend of mine at school uh, said, you know, thought cigarettes are cool. I knew my mother smoked cigarettes. I didn't really, I wasn't one way or the other on it. He said, hey man, let's hang out after school and smoke some cigarettes. And I'm like, hey man, that'd be pretty cool. You know, my mother smokes, his mother smokes, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And, um, yeah, and then in between seventh and eighth grade, I remember drinking for the first time. It was a ridiculous amount. Um, from there on, it wasn't like an all the time thing. But yeah, you know, you, into eighth grade and ninth grade and up through high school, a lot of drinking. I got to uh, smoking weed going into ninth grade. Um, yeah, I actually remember uh, I moved to Caribou from Massachusetts my uh, freshman year. Mm -hmm. And at the end of my freshman, it was uh, March actually of uh, 1991, I moved here. And, uh, you know, I didn't make a lot of friends right away. Um, but towards the end of the year during finals, uh, you know, one of the other kids looked at me and said, you want to go to a cake party this weekend? And, you know, because I had drank before, mm -hmm. you know, I felt this is my chance to make friends, to fit right. in with all of these other people who grew up together, yeah. you know? So yeah, I, I get that, um, you know, the- uh, Yeah, I moved around a lot too. Yeah. When I was a kid, almost every year I'd be at a different school mm -hmm. uh, until I got to like the, the sixth grade mm -hmm. where we kind of settled in one place. Uh, but all up until that, you know, and then getting there was kind of a similar thing. Like I didn't know any of those people, so I had to make friends. Yeah. And I was kind of trying to be like, you know, the cool kid, do right. whatever. Like, you yeah, know. be the chameleon and, and try to find a group that yeah. accepts you. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's what we look for. We, we look for acceptance. Yeah. Um, so where would it be uh, growing up that you would actually call home? Uh, well, I mean, I grew up, you know, in southern Maine, tri the Tri-City tri area, which is like Biddeford, Sock, Old Orchard Beach, yeah. is where I moved around when I was a lot younger, um, a lot of family there, and then uh, my mother and stepfather moved to Arundel, which is basically Kenny Bunkport, same zip code, yeah. just not as close to the water. Um, but we, I lived there from sixth grade onward. Until uh, my, my mother had moved away after I moved out. So I spent a lot of my time there. I went to Kenny Monk High School. I was in a bundle school from sixth grade onward. So that's where I met a lot of my friends and did a lot of my exploratory, you know, usages. And a lot of it, like I said, was, was drinking to begin with. That was the big thing. So did you have a lot of police involvement in your life? <sighs> Not a lot. I mean, it was all for stupid stuff, you know? Um, not showing up to court or not paying fines was the biggest thing. Some driving um, without a license at OEY in 2007. Um, so there's the, dr the drinking part of everything, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, most of my police involvement was little. I did spend some time in there for, uh, you know, saying I was somebody else one time when I got pulled over drunk, you know, saying I was somebody else, a friend of mine I knew. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so that severed ties with that friend you know when he found out about that obviously yeah. that's part of the burning bridges along the way kind oh of yeah thing. yeah we um, do some crazy stuff yeah uh but no i mean my i did spend some time in jail i got a possession charge in 2000 and uh in seven uh so 2006 seven was a rough time for me i spent some time in york county jail and cumberland county jail um but never too for too long and then right back to the same stuff you know yeah so yeah and uh you know, I myself, I, I've been to prison when I was 19. Uh, I did 10 months in, in prison, and that was really my first experience, uh, the first time I was ever arrested, mm -hmm. and, it, and it led to a prison sentence. Um, yeah. And I was, I was 19, and you know, I'd like to say that I was kind of scared straight when I came out, because you know, I didn't get in trouble as I, as I grew up, but once I got into substances, um, you know, the risk is always there. Yeah. You know? um, so, even though you didn't get caught, didn't spend you know much time in jail after that, were you still doing risky things? Oh yeah, yeah, I did a lot of risky stuff. Um, my, you know, my ascension to using the harder drugs took a little while. You know, like I said, cigarettes early on, then alcohol, and it wasn't until senior year I started experimenting with other things like mushrooms and MDMA, cocaine stuff like that pretty quickly went to that yeah. um, and obviously still drinking and everything like that so I usually say from 17 18 onward to about 23 
it's a lot of things that were questionable that I did. Yeah, it was a short time frame, but I did a lot of things. Uh, I burned a lot of bridges with people that I, I probably shouldn't have. Yeah, and <clears throat> I did a lot of things. Didn't always get caught, you know. So there's definitely times I look back now, things that I did then, and I'm like, I'm, I'm damn lucky that something didn't happen because yeah. I could have been in there ten months, year, a few years. Yeah. So some of the stuff that I did. Uh, to, to get by if you have it whatever thing you know live this certain lifestyle or whatever so yeah yeah and you know uh you know my my whole point with that is you know the risk we we never really consider that i mean we always know it's there yeah um but we're not gonna stop doing what we have to do um you know and uh, i always i always say that you know the use led to us doing these things and then these and these things led to us using you know what I mean? So sometimes we get high and we do stupid stuff, or sometimes we have to do things in order to get high. Um, you know, but there's just a lot of a, a lot of stuff that goes on. Yeah. Um, when I was 18, kind of um, fresh out of high school, in that summer, I uh, linked up with a guy who was pretty big in Maine, making music at the time, and showed him some of my beats, and he introduced me to his manager, and he signed me to a management deal. And then it was kind of, it was a downhill spiral from there. Um, because the guy who was a manager, little did I know, was into coke and drinking. And that was all he was doing, you know. And yeah. so was I. So it was like when we linked up, it right. was just like a tornado. Yeah. Um, and it spiraled really quickly into about, um, so that was like 2003. By 2005, six, like that's when I started to get arrested. Things were really bad. But in that time frame, we were at the studio every day, every other day, or we're running to get drugs and we're trying to flip stuff for money. And it was just always living that lifestyle and like sleeping on the couch, sleeping in, in Deering Oaks Park. Like I'd sleep wherever. People's front entryways, like in Portland, just walk up and down the street till I find an entryway, go in it. You know, yeah. apartments in Portland, sometimes they got yeah. the entryway and they get a downstairs or an upstairs apartment yeah. and they might not be locked or laundry rooms I've been in. I mean, I'd do whatever. And right. it was all because all I was living for was, yeah, was the drugs or drinking and just keeping the party going at that point. And that was what was around me. Like that's what I surrounded myself with. Like I was like, if I keep certain artists, I know they're they're into doing drugs. I'm gonna keep them around, keep them around. Right. To, could use them however I wanted to use them for my own personal benefit. It wasn't yeah. because, you know, yeah, it was cool to make music and everything at that time. But I wish that I wasn't doing that because the connections would have been more real. You know. Yeah, and you know, I I, I was kind of the same way. Uh, I had a business going, uh, taking care of foreclosed houses, and I used to hire people that I knew used, so that I didn't have to hide it. Um, and you know, the other thing was I could get away with, you know, giving them a little bit of stuff to pay them for the day instead yeah. of having to spend my money. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, so uh, where did your your deal take you? Uh, did you get some? big records out and make a bunch not, of money? Not really. I mean, I did some, I, I think I made some good music with some people along the way and stuff mm -hmm. that some of it I'm, I could be proud of, you know? Yeah. Um, but nothing that really ever materialized anything, you know? Yeah. I would be literally, uh, at some point, I would be in the studio, not even mine, just someone else's place, you know? I'm there taking over and I'm making beats and I'm only making beats so that I could get coke, you yeah. know? Like yeah. I'll, I'll make a beat and I hit up the coke dealer who happened to be a rapper, you know? Yeah. Just made fire beats. Like I got 10 on a CD right now. If you give me like a gram or an eight ball or whatever right. it was. Right. And he'd be like, all right, bring them over. And then, you know, it was just, that was my lifestyle. And that's how people viewed me. You know, so in that, in that yeah, frame. instead of the music, it became about the drugs. Right. Um, and, you know, when that's the focus, of course, you're not doing your best work, you know? You know, you don't care where it's leading you as yeah. long as it's leading you to the next hit. <laughs> You know, so, um, so last year when I came up for the Recover Loud Aroostook event, um, Ryan Page was was up here speaking for me, and you guys decided to shoot a video while he was here. Yeah. Um, and that was the first time I I really met you, and I got to see you work. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so then this past summer, of course, when I decided to come to Caribou, um, you were the first person I thought of uh, to help me direct this show. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I've always appreciated that connection. Um, you know, and the work that you do is is really good. Uh, are, you're still making beats today. Oh yeah, uh, working with artists. Yep, yep. Um, 
like a lot more selective of what I do and who I work with or whatever, but I do, I still work with people. Um, I like making music videos, that's kind of like my thing now. Uh, because making music so long, it's just not that it's boring, but sometimes it gets stagnant. Yeah, so I, I got some cameras, that's how this all got started, was I was, um, I was asking around and who's going to make music videos, because I was asking for some artists in 2019, I was working with some people and they wanted to make music videos, and like, you could do it right, and I'm like, I don't know, I don't have a camera or anything. So then I found someone who had a camera, and I kind of took direction on videos that we went and shot, and then I would take and edit the footage, you know, mm. and uh, then uh, in 2020, 2021 ish when the pandemic was going on I, I was like trying to expand what I was doing and I'm like I'm gonna get some cameras or I'm gonna get a camera and I'm gonna try to put together some of my own stuff and that's where it kind of sparked the whole video thing because yeah. um, looking on YouTube I was like you know watching people in the editing programs for videos and I was looking up how to do it like before I got the camera so it's like do that like with everything yeah. uh, I was like, it's almost like editing music in a way, like the way it's set up. I'm like, it's almost just like editing music, so it shouldn't be too much different. And that that really sold me. I'm like, that's it. I might as well get a camera. And then the rest is history. Basically, I started making music videos like crazy. I think I made like, I'm like twenty something now at this point. Yeah, which is awesome because I mean it's something. It's one of my favorite things to do. So. So in the first season, I was able to use uh, music from my my friend, the real young swag. Uh, I used it for the intro and, and the exit of the show. And uh, when we first got started up here, Facebook uh, was not a uh, platform that I shared the, the show on last year. Facebook was added by you, um, you know, as, a, as an additional platform to share the show, but there was an issue with the copyright claims on the music because Facebook, um, yeah. you know, has, has difficulty doing that. So we were discussing it and, you know, you had told me real quick that you could, you know, use some of your beats. Uh, for the inter and then the next day you said uh, I wrote a theme song, right? And uh, yeah. you know I was I was actually blown away. Um, you know the idea of having our own song for the show. Um, you know I didn't think that was real. You know right. I mean I never expected that. So I mean you've actually you brought a lot to the show, um, and just you know that gives me a great appreciation for you and also your recovery. Um, you know and just listening to what you shared you're able to focus on the work now mm -hmm. because it, it's it's not the drugs we're chasing right you know yeah and uh you know i i think you're doing great yeah and uh that's the song was just like you know uh, i was i was bummed out mm -hmm. uh, that's how it came about i was bummed out that we had to change it mm -hmm. at all because yeah. i liked how it was too and i, yeah. I didn't want to um you know i may have differences with young swag you know, but I wanted to use the song. I yeah. Did. You know that. Yeah. And so, like, I was like really bummed out, and I'm like, I want this to be good because right. I was like, all right, I could throw a beat on there and it will sound okay. Yeah. But if we actually take time to write something out, mm -hmm. and then once I started writing it, it just it just flowed out, you know. Yeah. So I was happy to put it together, and I was glad that it came together so quick. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I was and surprised. I never wrote a theme song for anything, so it was totally new for me. So yeah. So and and to do it so quick. You know, uh, on the spot, you know, uh, a lot of music takes, uh, you know, inspiration, creativity, um, and sometimes we, we just don't. I have a lot of that. that. I have <laughs> yeah. a lot, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's brewing around all the time. Yeah. Yeah, and it comes out in various ways and different mm -hmm. things. It's not always like recording a song or making a beat or yeah. going, taking photographs or, or recording a show, which is it's all, to me, that's all art. Yeah, of course know, everything yeah. is no matter what it's a digital art and I make flyers or mm -hmm. make composite photos that's one of my favorite things to do yeah so when I first started the show it had nothing to do with art mm -hmm. I had a message I didn't have any ability really or, or knowledge or skill yeah. on how to produce a show and you know uh, Portland Media Center uh, thankfully they have programs where you know they teach you the class and then they allow you to use a studio we didn't focus on uh, you know the aesthetics of it. Um, it was you know let's get the message out there. Mm -hmm. um, so the second season, you know you've brought that for us, and uh, you know it's it's made it a whole new show. Uh, we're getting great reviews. Uh, the views are, are way up there. Um, well, the most important thing is the message, though. I yeah, just like exactly. to present it in a you know like a more artsy way. Yeah, if, if and, I can. And everybody likes opening a prettier box. You yeah. know what I mean. Um, so, you know, that, that has helped us, uh, you know, reach further because it's important to get the message out there. 
you know, I'm just, I'm proud to be able to get it out there uh, for people to hear. Yep. Um, you've also been able to make the TV ads for us, uh, the commercials for our, our sponsors. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's something that... Another fun thing that I did. <laughs> yeah. That, that was something I've always wanted to try. So. Yeah. And, you know, they, they come out great and they love it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, we're always looking for more sponsors, more opportunities to make ads. Yeah. I yeah. love making ads, so... Yeah. The more I can make, the better. Yeah. And one thing that uh, I know that our sponsors appreciated was... You know, once we make the ad, we do give it to them that they want to go to cable station and, and use yeah, that ad. Use you know, the ad however that, you want. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's, you know, a little different than than uh, the local stations where they make the commercial and you know it's it's yeah. Theirs. If they want to put on the YouTube, Facebook, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, free to do that. Yeah. So if anybody's interested in sponsoring the show, uh, you know, Ryan would be happy to come out and you know record a, an ad for you and. Uh, get that out on the air so that people can see that you support recovery um, and by supporting Recover Loud uh, they're actually supporting the recovery community here that we're trying to build so by bringing people together to share their stories here you know from around the county we're getting to see that people are recovering here whether they come together to do events um, as the rest of the state does or not um, you know there's plenty of people here that have found a path of recovery um, and they're doing well today. So, you know, we're just happy to share those stories and to, to try to show the community that, that we are out here. Um, um, to touch on, on harm reduction too, I mean, that, you know, it may not work for everybody, that method of doing things. Mm -hmm. Some people are, that's it, I need to stop completely, whatever. I just know it worked for me because I went from doing hard drugs to uh, I was smoking cigarettes, drinking and doing weed still, right? Mm -hmm. 2011 came along, no more. No more cigarettes, 2013, no more drinking, you know, and, and now I'm just, you know, medical marijuana. Yeah. So it's like, that's all I do now. And it, that's mm -hmm. harm reduction to a T, you know? Oh, absolutely. And I feel like maybe not everybody that works for, but if we keep that open as an option and people are all open to that, especially medical marijuana or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, Suboxone, Methadone, that kind of thing. Yeah. If that's helping people live a normal, healthy life, there should be no argument against exactly. it, in my opinion. Yeah, and you know, uh, the basis behind harm reduction is once you suffer a fatal overdose, there's zero percent chance of recovery. Zero, yeah. Um, so you know, any positive step forward is going to keep you alive. Um, and recover loud. We share as many different paths uh, to recovery. Yours was, you know, uh, a hard decision for an important event in your life and you changed locations mm -hmm. and you found support, you know, mm -hmm. and that worked for you. Yep. Um, that doesn't necessarily work for everybody, mm -hmm. but for you, you know, you found yeah. what you needed. I never, I never had a treatment program or plan or anything. Yeah. It was, my daughter was being born and this is what I can use mm -hmm. to make the change. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's and basically what it was. If that would have never happened, I, I can't say what would have happened to me, honestly. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and I'm sure the love of your wife helps. Oh my uh, God, yeah. Going. I mean, obviously for a long time, I, she didn't even know that I had a problem with drugs. It was four years into our relationship before wow. she, I finally told her. And it, a lot of things started to click at that point. Yeah. And she'd never been around it, you know? So without her, without my kids, yeah, none of it would have been possible at all. Mm -hmm. That would probably, you wouldn't be talking to me right now, probably, Yeah, to be honest. Yeah, and, and I'm glad I get to. Yeah, same. <laughs> um, so Ryan, if there's anybody out there who, who may be struggling still today, uh, who has dreams of making music, um, you know, but their focus isn't quite there because they're stuck somewhere else, uh, you know, uh, is there anything you'd like to say to them? Um, I would just probably say that, uh, you know, if you are struggling, um, trying to make that decision, uh, just reach out. It doesn't mean you have to commit to anything. But if you reach out to somebody, um, they can offer some advice. I think that's helpful because I know when it was me, um, you know, I didn't reach out because no one ever said to. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if someone had said that, reach out, like, you know, you know, it's not looking right for you right now. You know, you, yeah. something ain't up or whatever. If anyone would have said that, I probably would have done it. Yeah. So I know that, you know, by doing this show and being able to have this platform, people watch it and just maybe hearing that reach out and 
Mike's email, right? Recovery yeah. OTR18 at Gmail. And um, I mean, there's tons of resources, not only in the county, but in the state of Maine. And as the days and weeks go by, uh, more and more resources are popping up, more and more nonprofits, more and more volunteers um, yeah. are helping with everything. So yeah. it's, it's, the stigma is still there, you know, it's, it's there, but it is, there's ways that we're kind of eliminating it and it's, yeah. it's, it's going as well as I guess we could have expected. Thanks for sharing your story tonight, Ryan. Yeah. Um, I'm glad to have you on the show. Yeah, I'm glad uh, to be here. You know, and uh, you know, keep producing good work for us. And you know, I, I think we're gonna go places. Oh yeah, definitely. So. Um, yeah. So if you want to check out my work, uh, you can go over to elevateaudioandvisual.com. Uh, we do weddings, realty, uh, photos, video, video, videography, music videos, event videos. Um, I'll try anything. I got drones, cameras, whatever. I'm, I'm always looking to try new things. And if you're into you want to check out the music, head to obesetheprofit.com and uh, yeah, recover loud, everyone. Recover loud. Anderson's Auto Repair, locally owned and operated in Sweden, Maine, specializes in all make, all model vehicle diagnosis and repair. Each individual service is backed by our nationwide TechNet, two year, 24,000 mile warranty. Call or stop in to schedule an appointment today. Anderson's Auto, for wherever the road takes you. I'm on a journey to discover the truth Living life in recovery is lovely You got the power in you Surround yourself with positive energy Judges hitting people with provocative penalties Need to make a change Advocate to change the laws Prove the people that it's not insane When you stand behind a cause I'm here to speak about the pain Recover loud to normalize the disease That's been killing all my friends And my family The time is now to let it all go and Recover loud The benefit is healthy people Family and friends that never have to overdose ever again never have to plead out to a lesser offense i'm proud to say that i recover loud i never thought i could but i'm so proud that i discovered how to live my life again controlling my own destiny i needed recovery i still need it desperately addiction never defined my identity. i recover loud here to tell my own story i recover proud save a life of like 40 i recover loud yeah i recover loud i recover loud yeah I recover loud, I recover loud, here to tell my own story. I recover proud, save a life of like 40. I recover loud, yeah, I recover loud. I recover loud, yeah, I recover loud. I recover, 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 I recover loud. Ryan Lemire and I recover loud.